Welcome back heroes to some more Pokemon Scarlet and Violet the Indigo Disc DLC. Last episode we discovered the hidden treasure of Area Zero and caught Terrapagos and we got an announcement. What is it? So this is an announcement for the following student. Hidden from Naranjo Academy. Miss Briere would like to see you in classroom 1-4. She has some important news to share with you regarding the terrestrial phenomenon. Okay, let's head on over. Before we do that though, we have something to do. And that is go into our box and check out Terrapagos. Right, so where are you? you got to be right at the end. Uh, where did you get put in the box? I have no idea where you are. Probably went past it, hang on. So a little look for it. Where are you hiding? There you are. So normal Stella. Ooh. Okay. So it is a completely brand new type. Um, just going to replace... For a little bit. I'm going to move you around because I want to keep you in a safe place. Uh, let's put you 15. There you go. Right. Level 85. 1 HP. Oh, that's so cool. Oh, no, it's Terra type. So it's type normal. Terra type is Stella, which is the, um, obviously, powers up every single type, which is so cool. Then you got the Terra Star Storm, which was such a cool animation. Then Headbutt, Earth Power, Water Pulse, Terra Shift. When the Pokemon enters a battle, it absorbs the energy around itself and transforms into a terrestrial form. Sweet. Okay, so let's go to classroom 1-4. Go and see Miss Briere and see what we've got to do. Because I know we have to go and catch a bunch more Pokemon so we can actually um, do Perrin's quest. Which excited to see what's going to happen with that. Because last time, obviously, Blood Moon Ursaluna in the Teal Mask was great. Yo. Hey Hayden, glad to see you. You feeling rested and recovered after our big adventure down in the under depths? Absolutely. Ready for more adventure? Oh, youth really is an enviable thing. I'm still feeling all wrung out despite having been back for a while now. But onto why I called you here. Since our return, I've been writing up everything we discovered on our expedition. Honestly, I've hardly slept. I obtained Gita's permission to turn it all into a book. But don't worry, I've made sure to skip a few details and omit the names of those involved. So voila! A proof copy of the book, freshly delivered from my publisher, just for you. Nice. Can we actually read it? So a proof copy of the exploration notes covering the Area Zero under depths. It's filled with long paragraphs describing what happened, along with Briar's thoughts. I behaved recklessly in the under depths. I don't know what we would have done if it weren't for you. You truly deserve a copy of this book. I just hope it's sufficient as an apology. Ah, but there was something else I needed to check with you. Would you mind showing me your terror orb? Okay. Hmm, I thought as much. It's behaving just like Kieran's and Carmine's orbs. I think it might be because your orbs were directly exposed to the energy from Terra Pagos. Kieran and Carmine say that ever since the Underdepths, they've been able to terrestrialize their Pokemon without charging their Terra orbs. So actually, there's one more piece of news I should share with you related to those uh, deepest depths. You know the uh, uh, Terrarium core that hangs from the ceiling of the Terrarium? Well, until now, I've been keeping it topped up with a mixture of Paldean soil and water from the crystal pool in Kitakami. That's how we've been able to stabilize the terrestrial phenomenon on our academy grounds. But the other day, I tried adding crystals I'd collected from the under depths to, to that mix and it caused the properties of the core to change. The result? Pokemon shining in rainbow colors have started appearing all over the terrarium and they have the stellar terra type. Thanks to this, my research into to the terrestrial phenomenon is shining brighter than ever. Okay, sweet, so we can get some uh, terror time, but now we know what's inside the, the big core up top. And that's why she was so interested in the, uh, the like, the hot spring bit in the Kitakami. That's, that's so cool how that came together, but stellar type terrestrialization grants a boost to moves, but only once per move type. After you use a move, no other moves of that same type will get the boost. In terror raids, all moves will be boosted without limit. Oh, sick. Oh, and there was one last thing. Man in the blue suit was looking for you over by the entrance to the academy. That's all I have to report for now. Thanks for setting aside some time to chat. I'm off to pay a visit to my publisher, so I'll leave you to it. Next time we meet, I'll ask you for a good long look at Terra Pagos. Until then. All right, sounds good, but a man in a blue suit. At the entrance, okay. Uh, entrance. Can't think of anyone in a blue suit. Blue suit. It's not you. 
freaked out. So you hey there, yo. So what's this? So, oh hey there, Hayden. What brings you back up here? I just want to chat. To chat with me? Well, well, I like the popular one. By the by, how's that blueberry Pokedex of yours coming along? Come show me once you've food it a bit. And definitely come show me if you complete it. I'll be sure to shower you with praise. Okay. Will do, but that's not the person we need to speak to. This dude right here? Oh ho! You look at the uh, cut of your jib. You must be the one everyone's talking about. You're the Powdean exchange student, Hayden. Or oh, my name's not Snacksworth. Yes, indeed. Call, call me Snacksworth. I do love to see the young students putting some real effort into their self-improvement. Especially the kids who really give it their all for the old BBQs. I rolled them with snacks. These snacks I make are very special treats, made just to the taste of certain Pokemon. One of my snacks in hand, you may find yourself running into quite spectacular Pokemon. So come give old Snacksworth the latest whenever you've been hard at work at them BBQs. Okay. Right. Heavens to Betsy. You've gone and completed uh, 10 solo quests. That's how you've earned yourself one of my special snacks. Oh, Grout, this is how you get the legendary Pokemon. Oh, sweet, okay. Now there's a Groudon tree. You know Groudon, frightfully rare, that one. Not your run of the mill Pokemon. Speaking of Groudon, I do recall this one particular encounter when I was a younger fella. I did spy old Groudon once back in the days when I was adventuring around Paldea. You know the huge cave system under that one town? I never can remember the name. Anyway, the name don't matter, except to say that's that's the place where I saw that fella. Thought to myself, well, that ain't Groudon. I gave a big wave of my arms to say hello. What else are you supposed to do when uh, faced with the continent Pokemon, I ask you? So anyway, I did that, and then it showed me its huge fearsome claws that it did. Loves that snack you have there, so you might just have a shot at me in it too. If you run into old Groudon, uh, you'd be sure to give it my best. Okay. And then, any more? Done 20. But I've, done, I've done quite a few, I feel like. Zapdos. Okay. Is that there's a Zapdos treat? You know Zapdos, frightfully rare, that one. Not your run-of-the-mill Pokemon. Speaking of Zapdos, I do recall this one particular encounter when I was a younger fella. I climbed right up to the tippy-top of one of those lighthouses you've got in Paldea. And I was taking in the view, looking over a distant city. When, would you believe it? The heavens broke wide open and the rain started pouring down on me. Thought I'd better get out of that mess in a hurry, so I turned to head down again. Then the whole sky lit up in a huge crash of lightning, and Zapdos came flying out of nowhere. It blew me, blew right by me, quick as a flash. Loves that snack you have there, so you might just have a shot at me in it too. Okay. I'm thinking, I know what Groudon is, I know what, I definitely know what Zapdos is. So we're done 30. And we got Suicune. So where's Suicune? Now there's a Suicune treat, uh, you know Suicune, frightfully rare that one, not your run-of-the-mill Pokemon. Okay, so, see I spotted Suicune once while I was out enjoying the famous lake you've got in Paldea. We ended up having a little contest of skill, seeing which one of us could get all the way to the shore fastest. We're off like a shot, but that Suicune, well, it runs right over the water, now don't it? Me just being your everyday human, the best I could manage was a nice solid backstroke. It was a fine race though, mighty fine, even though that Suicune did end up beating me by a whisker. It loves that snack? Okay, so I think I know where Suicune is as well. This guy's just seen like every legendary Pokemon. Done 40, so what's next? Raikou! Okay, and there's a Raikou tree. No Raikou frightfully red, that one, not your run of the mill Pokemon. So this one is racing up a mountain together. That Raikou is no slouch, that's for sure. Keep kept dashing past me and taking the lead. Suffering and puffing and muttering some colourful fingers I chased that woolly Pokemon. In the end we were sitting side by side atop that peak, gazing out upon the massive and majestic desert that covers the land to the north. That's important, okay. So I think I know where Raikou is. Did I, have I done 50? I don't think I've done 50. Uh, no, almost. So I've done 46 quests. That's, that's good to know, like, that's how you get um the legendaries. Lots to collect there. Right, so now, uh, what I need to do is I think uh, to end this off, this series off, I don't really mind legendary hunting. Like, I'd, uh, there's just legendaries are just in like every single game now. They don't feel legendary, if you, if you know what I mean. 
but uh, where's the entrance? It's just, yeah, just here. Like, Legendary Pokemon just like available in so many games. I've got like, got, I think all of them in my Pokemon home ready to transfer over I could. So, anything new I want to do. So I think it's probably going to be Perrin's Quest. So I need to go catch a bunch of Pokemon, but I need to do uh, more BBQs, because once you get 3,000 BP, you can then unlock um, more Pokemon to spawn in the biomes, which is going to definitely help. So, um, yeah, I'll see you guys when we've caught 200 Pokemon, because currently we are at uh, Pokedex 77. So I need 123 more. That's going to be a long while, so I've got to do some quests and whatnot. But I'll see you guys when we are ready to do Perrin's Quest. Okay, so as I've been working on the BP, someone told me something we can do, which uh, sounds very interesting. So, if we go and fly back to Kitakame and take uh, Terrapagos with us, we can actually get a uh, little cutscene, which I want to see. So, let's uh, go to the map, and we want to change map to Kitakame. Go to the Crystal Pool, and let's uh, fly here. I'm going to check this out. I'm excited. Had a lot of thumbs up, so, uh, yeah, this better be good. <laughs> Any new things we can do, especially coming back here, it's pretty cool. Right, so, uh, what do we do with this? Not exactly too sure where we go. Maybe, like, oh. I love Terra Pagas, it's so cute. <laughs> oh, Professor Seda! Well now, this is a curious development. Have I somehow broken through the boundary of space-time? And who are you? P professor Have we met? If so, oh, this is before! Um, okay. I'm sorry, but I don't seem to recall it. I'm Professor Seda. I research Pokemon in Area Zero, and yet... What? This Pokemon? Is this the Winged King? Uh, yeah, this is Koridon. Is, is that right? So his name is Koridon? Hmm, that's a good name. So from the clues you've already let slip, I suppose I would have to conclude. From your perspective, I must have come from the past. Though of course, the, the complexities of space-time are beyond count. It's possible that our encounter might not even be occurring in a timeline connected to my own. Perhaps this meeting is nothing more than a fleeting miracle. Why don't we exchange as much useful data as we can, in what little time that fate has gifted us. This is actually kind of cool. Alright. So, what do you want to know? Is there anything that you would like to ask me? Uh, why are you here? I don't precisely know the cause. I was analysing some recent data in my secret lab one moment, and the next I was standing here before you. Perhaps this is the influence of the crystal Pokemon that lies dormant in that place. Or perhaps that cause lies with you and I. Is there anything else you wish to ask me? What are you studying now? I'm researching methods to catch Pokemon that live in different timelines, so I might transport them to the present day in my own timeline. It sounds fantastical, no doubt, but I am drafting plans now for a machine that may achieve it. You see, this book captured my imagination when I read it as a child and has never let go. But progress has been slow and beset by failures. I haven't left my lab in quite some time now. I desperately hope that I might glean uh, some new insight from this conversation, so I can finally make pr some progress and return home. Is there anything else you wish to ask me? Uh, what about your family? Oh, you even wish to know about my private life? I do have family, a son. He's probably at home right now. Well, no, I suppose right now could be inaccurate. Whenever and wherever he is, I imagine he must be quite lonely. Yep. <laughs> Now, 
Let us trade places in this exchange. I'd say the time has come for my own questions. What is this place? Doesn't appear to be anywhere in Paldea. Now this is the land of Kirikami. So right, Kirikami's crystal pool, eh? I've been reading about it in its uh, certain texts. It's said to be a place where water wells up from the ground, imbued with terrestrial energy. It would seem that I've been shifted quite far in space, both space and time. My next question then. That Pokemon you have, the Winged King. Ah, I mean Coridon. Tell me more about it. So, uh, it's a precious partner to me. Yes, well, your personal attachment to the creature has no meaningful relevance to the... <laughs> ah, forgive me, <laughs> perhaps that was rude. Hmm, that book you have there. I don't recognize its cover. What is it? The Hidden Treasure of Area Zero. Would you let me see it for just a moment? Descriptions of the Area Zero under depths and a record of Terrapagus awakening? Who's this Briar to have written such a work? Uh, Descent of Heath? Now isn't that something? A descendant of the author of the original Scarlet Book. Exploration runs in the family, I see. At any rate, that is a book that would uh, ignite the imagination of any true scientist. I'm sorry, but I simply must have the time to read this book more thoroughly. Uh-oh. Don't seem like you're gonna have the time to. Oh, the mist is closing in once again. I assume that means our time is near its end. I wish I could spend longer getting to know the Winged King, but I must hurry. That book? I imagine it must be quite valuable. It wouldn't feel right for me to claim it without offering you any recompense, okay. In exchange then, though I hate to part with something so precious to me, would you consider trading me that book for my copy of the Scarlet Book? Sure. You can say no. <laughs> so we've got the Scarlet Book. I appreciate it more than you can imagine. Perhaps I should take this chance to go home and enjoy a bit of downtime with a good book. Yeah, I think Alvin would appreciate that, but this is where we part. Fellow adventurer and winged king. How lucky we were to meet across space and time. I bid you adieu. So that would make sense, like, how... The professor kind of knew us with the recordings, right? That was really cool and interesting. Oh. Okay, takes us back to the main menu. Okay. Uh, so we're back in Paldea. I am. Why did we back to the start? That was cool, though. That was really cool. So. What can I do with a Scarlet Book? Uh, the book has the name Sado written on it in clumsy handwriting. Don't know what I do with the, the Scarlet Book. But I, I can look, have a look around. Uh, I don't know, should I just go back? I don't think it happens if I go back here, but I'll, I'll give it a go. Oh, I can't. I think I've got to be outside to fly. But if not, I guess I'll just go back to uh, the terrarium and just continue my my exploring, and getting my BP. Oh, that's actually really sick. All right. Uh... Yeah. So let's. Oh no, I'm going to go to Kitakami real quick just to see 
anything happens over here. Maybe I can talk to Briasha or the Scarlet Book. She might be still being classroom one four. So many secrets, man. Many secrets to unlock. Yeah, nothing happens again if we come over here. Right, so let me go back over here and then we'll go, where's the entrance? There it is. Yes, yeah, so we'll go to classroom one four, go and speak to Brea, see if anything happens, and if not, I'll have to have a look around. Let's go one four. It feels like nothing else got. Yeah, Elite club room, let's go one four. Don't know if she's gonna be here, but give it a go. No, she's not here. Alright, I don't know where she is then. Right, I guess I'll go around and see if I can find anything, but um yeah. If anything pops up, I'll obviously show you guys. If I see any more comments, let me know what you know to go check out. I'll definitely go check it out. Okay, so I am finally back. It has been hours and hours and hours. Let me tell you, it was not easy getting 200 Pokemon because you have to actually uh, get the biomes upgraded. Not all of them, but the uh, starter Pokemon make up a large chunk of the Pokemon available here. There's 240 total. And um, obviously the starters make up, I think about like what, 70 something. So that's a lot, a lot of the Pokemon to collect. And we finally got 200. I need to sort the team out, but it took a very long time, especially like some of the uh, trade evolution ones. So I was trying to get raids and then there's version exclusives. I went around, I'd say like half an hour trying to find a Sandshrew. And then turns out Sandshrew is a version exclusive to Violet and I'm playing Scarlet. I was like, oh, are you kidding me? Oh, it was just, it was unfortunate. It was so unfortunate. All right, let's uh, go and speak to Perrin. Now that we have 200, just gonna double check, we do have 200. But I would really recommend, um, I think if you do the um, BBQs online with other people, it goes a lot faster. So I recommend doing that because doing it solo, it takes it takes a long time. Oh, keep pressing the wrong button. We want to go to Pokedex. That's where it's going to be Auckland. We're like 199. Yep, yeah, 200. There you go. Let's just get the reward. Woo! Okay, we got the Dream Ball. All right, so let's go speak to you. Finally have the 200. Hey Hayden, don't tell me. You already got yourself 200 Pokemon from, from the Terrarium? Not already, it took me a long time. <laughs> Impressive. Yeah, it was hard work. Very hard work. Pokemon were just really hard to evolve and just, oh man, but and a lot of the items as well to evolve the Pokemon, you could get through um, the league using BP, but you do want to spend your BP because you need to save the BP for um, the, the starter Pokemon. Well, look at you, putting all that effort. I, I like to see that in a kid. Probably know more about the Pokemon in the Terrarium than I do. And I got here first. I guess you've earned yourself that hot tip. Take a look at these photos, would you? Oh, oh. That, that's got to be the Entei, right? I can't make out, make out what that is. That's the Raikou, definitely. Sweet. So, see those strange Pokemon? That first one's called uh, Gouging Fire, and the other one's Raging Bolt. Totally unknown Pokemon in totally unknown places. If they're real, be a huge deal. Apparently, uh, these places are in Paldea. You have any idea where, Hayden? I do, yeah. Wow, are they famous spots? I want to visit them. Well, you missed your chance, you could have came earlier, but of course. You know how it is these days, right? These photos could t uh, totally be fakes. But if you want to know for sure, maybe you could go try to search these Pokemon out. I can show you the photos again anytime you like, just give me a shout. And find me something good. I've got faith in your survey skills. Okay. So the quest is to find um, the two legendary, or uh, paradox legendary, uh, like, technically legendaries, because they are like paradoxes of... Raikou and Suicune, but um, we need to switch and go over here, and then we go... Which one goes to area zero, is this? That's zero gate. That's Pokemon, oh, that's, yeah, okay, there you go, this one. All right, I haven't really fully explored area zero too much. Obviously, I played through it 
going through Scarlet, going through Violet, and then when we came down here uh, for the DLC, but I think, hmm, yeah, I think I've got a good understanding of where they could be. Right, so let's head on in. Also, I need to hope that um, Game Freak brings back the, the Suicune raid, because, um, yeah. I wanted to, uh, is it this way? I, I, I don't know how I'm getting it. I could just want to just like fast roll straight into it. But yeah, this weekend raid I never got to do. Cause um, I was gonna, <laughs> I was gonna do it. And I was like, I'll, I'll do it next time, I'll do it next time. And then just, I forgot. And then I regret it. <laughs> All right, let's find this. So it was a top the waterfall. So it's gotta be over there. Uh, can I just jump across? Man, that, honestly, like getting that Pokedex done, that took a lot out of me. I've been up, so like the DLC came out at one in the morning, right? So I played it from one in the morning till I'd say about uh, 11 in the morning. Then I took a little nap and I was like, oh no, I, I, I want to get this done. You know, I want to do Perrin's quest. So I woke up at like three. And then from 3 p.m. till now, which is 2.36 a.m., I've been just catching Pokemon. Doing raids. Trying to find some of them were really tough as well. Like, if you've got friends to, like, trade with and do the uh, the BBQs, I think it'll be a lot easier. So, if you know, if you're, if you're solo like me, maybe leave a comment. Try to find someone in, the, in the, the comments to do this with. Find a little friend and just, yeah. That would definitely help you out, Breviary. Don't attack me. Or maybe you won't be as bad as me and, like, you know, I didn't have the Pokedex really that much done. I had the Teal Mask stuff done, but the main Pokedex here, not so much. Uh, I think it's a bit over there, right? This waterfall? And then trying to find the Raging Bolt, I think. I know where it is. This looks, yeah, this looks like this was it. I know exactly what I'm going to use for these two as well. If I find them. Uh, maybe it wasn't here? A different waterfall? I felt like this should have been it. It's felt like it. Maybe like one over there. Oh, I wish I looked at the photos again. Just to double check. Well, we know it's by a waterfall. Could be that one. I think it might have been that one. I'm gonna go back across. And I feel like Raging Bolt would be down there a little bit, around this part. It's cool just to explore Area Zero again. Such a cool place. Great music as well. All the Paradox Pokemon are so sweet. Like, not only. Pardon me, I don't like the idea of Paradox Pokemon, but at the same time, I, they do look really cool. Like, Iron Valley is so sweet. And when I first saw it, I thought, that's so sweet, and then I was like, oh, okay, but then they're like, ah, uh, like Jigglypuff and Mysterious, like, that was that Fluttermane and Screaming Tail. <gasps> there it is, yeah, this one. A bit shaky. I'm gonna see if I can Batman. That actually looks kind of bad. Look at the, the horns, man, that looks badass. I like the green panel on his leg as well. This is sick. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, actually, I'm not gonna... I was gonna take a selfie with this. For the thumbnail. But I thought, better not, I don't, I don't want to spoil this in the, in the thumbnail, so I'll, uh, I'll, take the fu I'll take the selfie with Rage and Bolt. That's what we'll do. Those look at the red, red claws as well. 
But uh, yeah, it's gonna be kind of a boring battle, but <laughs> you throw Master Ball. I got, I got to admit, I do like that they're just like standing. That's one of my favorite things in Pokemon games that they kind of like stopped doing at one point and they kind of brought back. And that's just like, I like the legendary Pokemon just like kind of standing there. So you go next to it and just go, you know, take a picture with it or whatever, but it's Fire Dragon. So there are scant few reports of this creature being sighted. One short video shows it rampaging and spouting pillars of uh, flame. I'm going to say it. I actually really like the look of this. I think it's really cool. Uh, just, yeah, send box as it is, it's all good. I got really jealous when, like, the Suicune came out, and, and the, was it the Verizon at the same time? I was like, uh, I mean, Suicune. Oh, no, yeah, Ranger Bob's got to be down there. Right? No, I feel like it's got to be this, uh, there's two ways I think it could be. I'm actually starting to think it might be down that one now. I also thought it could be over here. I think that's lower, so I'm gonna go. Ooh, go over here first. Oh, gonna make it, gonna make it. Oh, I'm not gonna make it. Yeah, I got a bit jealous. I was like, you know what? This, the Suicune's really cool. And seeing, uh. Oh, it could be this one. Seeing. Corbalion. In the trailer, I was thinking, it looks okay, but the Raging Bolt just looked. So much cooler. So this is yeah, this is the area I was thinking it could be at. Maybe. Uh, but yeah, if it was here, we'd see it. So maybe it is the other side. All right, let's uh, keep on looking. It's kind of fun, just try and explore. But once we get these, we'll go back to Perrin and see if anything happens. And I think that'll be the DLC done, I think. Or I think I want to at least show, like, story-wise. And then I think, unless they do more for Scarlet and Violet, that's me done with Scarlet and Violet until, I don't know, next Pokemon game, I guess. Ah, there it is, yeah. Alright, let me, uh, get a cool selfie with this. Oh, uh, just want to... And then you press Y. And, uh, can we just get a bit better in shot? Can't really see it too well. <laughs> hey, oh. Ah. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> it looks so cool. Wait, it was, how it, it was the, uh... Ah, the roto stick. That's it's X. That's better. Although... Yeah, that's fine. I was thinking of getting, like, a nice selfie with it, but just, it's it's hard to get it all in, in shot. Like, Entei would have made a much better, much better selfie. Yeah. So I got these two now, but unfortunately I have the Suicune. So I can't have all three. But if Game Freak ever want to make it return for an event, that would be pretty sweet. I think it came out in January, right? Last, well, this January, so... Maybe they'll do a rerun in January, that'd be kind of cool. Or like a way to just catch it normally. Maybe a mystery gift. To wait and see. So it was a raid. It's said to incinerate everything around it with lightning launched from its fur. Very little is known about this creature. So uh, it weighs a lot and it's very tall. Like, I can't not hate it, because I love giraffes, man. Giraffes are so sick. It's like a little giraffe. Sorry, for a giraffe. <laughs> I still like you more, don't you worry. Just got to replace you with this one. Nice. Okay, wait, wait a second. Oh, oh, it's probably, um... I was going to say the Pokedex. I, I think there was, like, two spaces left, but I'm going to assume they're the, um... Is it two? Yeah, these two are probably, um, they're, well, they're not probably, they've got to be the Terrakion and uh, Cobalion. All right. So let's uh, go back to Perrin, see if she says anything with this. Uh, we want to go Savannah area, rest area one. Uh, 
wonder how many like miles we're gonna rack up taking the plane back and forth <laughs> from Kitakami, Paldea, Unova. All right, yo, got him. Hmm, that Pokemon isn't that the Pokemon from the picture. That's a real life gouging fire. Just look at the shape of its head. There are rumors that they, they that say this fellow can make magma erupt from the ground just by roaring. Hmm, if that were true, then this thing would uh, be a real fearsome threat to face. Let me just let me just snap a, a couple of photos here. This could mean the other Pokemon I showed you is real too. Report out to me if you find it, okay? Well, I have it. Hey, oh. That Pokemon. Isn't that the Pokemon from the picture? A real raging bolt. That neck is. Boy, that neck. It's almost too much to fit in one frame. I know, right? I tried earlier, but rumor has it that this fellow can cover the whole sky with dark clouds and bring lightning crashing down just by swinging that long neck around. Hm. If that were true, then this thing would be a real fearsome threat to face. Let me just snap a couple of photos here and then. Now what? Wow, you actually went and found them both. I can't even be surprised. That's just like you. Between you and me, I was having a hard time focusing on my work. I couldn't keep my mind off those photos. You saved me. I know I didn't promise any rewards or anything, but I've got to thank you for putting the mystery to rest. Here you go. This prize is a real catch. A sports ball. A sport ball? What? A special Pokeball that was used during the bug catching contest in the joke. Oh, cool. Why are you giving me this? I mean... Sometimes, Game Freak hint at future games. I'm just saying, Johto. Let's go, Johto. I'm one of the people that love Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee. I'm just saying. I mean, I don't think it was a perfect game, but like style-wise, fantastic. And I just think I think it could. It was obviously a bit underrated. I thought it was actually pretty decent. But it's wild how much mystery is left in the world, isn't it? So when you're a kid, you can just uh, run wholehearted wherever you want. But it's not uh, so easy when you get older. You keep running, Hayden. Find unknown Pokemon, have grand adventures. Do it for me. And now I think I'd better get back to work. All right, that's the quest done. So I think for me, that's uh, that's it. I saved the game. But um, yeah, Scarlet and Violet overall. I thought Scarlet and Violet had a great story. Um, I thought Pau Day was a little bit disappointing, if I'm being completely honest, but Kitakami also a little bit disappointing, but the Terrarium was actually really fun to explore. And uh, what else? Like, yeah, I, I felt like the challenge for this DLC was is definitely good. I think that, I didn't think it was like super competitive. Like I saw people saying like, oh, you got to bring in like competitive VGC teams. Like, I don't, I don't think so. I mean, it's definitely hard. They, they're like, they're, the AI, the Elite Four have definitely got some good, strong, strong teams. But nothing too difficult. And then, um, yeah, if they can go keep this like difficulty going forward, that'd be great. And the challenges, like some of the challenges were good, and some of them were just so bad. Like the the gym going down the the ice slope was terrible, and then they kind of fixed it a little bit with the flying here. But it just need to be longer, a little bit more challenging, because it was just that was way too easy. But like they got the they got the recipe right there, it's right in front of them for a, just a banging. Banging, challenging game, but I feel like I just keep taking the easy way out a little bit. But overall, I gotta say, Gen 9, Scarlet and Violet, I liked it. I think the DLC was definitely good. I think I think this DLC was definitely better than uh, Teal Mask. I did I did love Ogre Pond though and the little story there. But um, I'm a bit surprised because I felt like I saw some people talking about uh, the, the the legendary Pokemon, the three evil ones in a uh, Teal Mask. Like this could have been like a fourth one. But, guess not. <laughs> but, yeah, overall, enjoyed it. Enjoyed this game a lot. And, uh, yeah, don't know what's going to come next. Either, you know, a new, maybe a new Legends game, which I would love, love that. New Let's Go game, again, I like that. Whether it be, I don't know, a black and white remake. Again, depends how they do it. I would like that. And then if it's uh, a completely brand new Gen 9 game as well, I would love that as well, or maybe they do like a, as long as it's not like an Ultra Scarlet and Violet and it's basically the same game, if they want to do like Scarlet and Violet 2, down for that, you know, there's a lot to look forward to, and I think after Sword and Shield, I think this is definitely improvement to me, like, if they can keep going, for, for me personally, if they can keep, keep, keep going in this sort of direction, getting better and better, I'll be happy with it, because Sword and Shield was a bit of a disappointment, but I thought the DLC for that was really good 
and then just, yeah, keep on proving, which is, is what you want, what you want. Anyway, I'll let, let you guys go. Um, let me know if you're gonna pick this DLC up or if you, you know, you don't care, you're waiting for the next game or whatever. I just, let me know your opinions. If what you, you watched it, you think it was, it was all right. The only thing I'll say is like the BBQ is really cool. I just think if they, I wish they kind of give you a little bit more points. Like if each one gave you a hundred and then the, the elite one gave you like 500, be a lot better. But anyway, I'll catch you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day. Peace.